A lot of you guys keep asking me which is the best consulate. There's one embassy in India, five consulates in India. So you can interview in New Delhi, Kolkata, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Chennai. There's these five locations that you have access to. So which one should you go to? Which has the highest possibility of approval? Especially if you're rejected, I'm going to be answering this in this video for first timers and rejected candidates both. Before we begin, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get access to more such information that we keep on posting every single week. And you can follow me on Instagram and I will be happy to update you on the most up-to-date news related to your visa type. Now guys, I have a table for you right over here. Please take a look at this. What this table tells you is that these are the number of student visas approved in 2022 at each of the consulates and these are the student visas approved in 2019 at each of the consulates. Now, it would be pretty easy for you to say, hey, look, the number is the biggest in Delhi. So the Delhi consulate, by the way, Delhi is actually an embassy. That's the head of all the consulates. Regardless, the Delhi embassy is the one where I should go for my interview. So is that the end of the video? Is that the answer that you were looking for? The answer here is no. It's not as simple as that. Understand this. This does not tell you the approval rate. The approval rate would be the number of people who got approvals divided by the total number of interviews that were conducted. Now, some of these consulates can be stronger, which can have more capacity, can open up more slots. That means you don't know if 95% of the interviews were approvals at Delhi, whereas 99% were approvals at Hyderabad. You do not have access to this information with the information that the US Embassy puts out. This information was put out by the Embassy, whereas the approval rate information is not something that is put out. Now, we have been working with thousands of clients and over the last couple of years, every single month, we calculate the approval rates and we see which is the best consulate out there for the 15,000 almost clients that we have sent to these consulates in the last four years. There was also the case of a Chinese visa officer at Mumbai counter number 34, by the way, who keeps on moving around. Last time we found he was in Kolkata, then in Mumbai, then in Delhi. So they keep on changing locations as well. So it's very difficult to say that one person or two visa officers, for instance, would be responsible for this particular approval rate or for the performance of a particular embassy or consulate at any single point in a month. But one thing I can tell you from personal experience is forget about approval rates, forget about the consulate. The best consulate for you would be the one that you are closest to. You do not need to go too far. If possible, if you get a slot in the closest consulate, that is the best possible outcome you could have. It's mentioned on the US Embassy's website. It's mentioned multiple times in the conferences that the US Embassy has done. And it's something that I personally believe in with the data that we have seen. That's one thing that has come to light. I can assure you of that. We've done a lot of research on that. And I'll give you a couple of tips and tricks right over here. And hopefully, if you can get to the nearest consulate that you have, that will be the best possible outcome. So that's the answer of this video. Now, a couple of tips and tricks so you make sure that you don't get rejected. Your confidence, your body language counts a lot more than you may realize. Your body language can make or break the interview. It can show the visa officer if you're confident that you should be given an interview. And if you're underconfident or basically you're not really sure about what you're saying, it may look like you are trying to do something shady or you may not come back to your country. Again, point number two stems from point number one that you need to show ties to your home country. You need to show that you have roots here and you'll come back here after you visit the United States for this education, work, or whatever purpose you're going over there. Number three is to keep your finances ready and these finances should be valid. Not everything counts, by the way. Not everything can be shown as finances. Some finances are not liquid. They cannot be shown. We've done more videos on this and we go much more in detail, but illiquid finances are not finances that you can show. Show liquid finances, which you can pull out anytime you want and keep them ready. They should exceed the amount that you need to show to study over there in the United States. Number four, know the purpose of your trip. If you're a student, know the university you're going to, know details about the school, know your reason for pursuing the program, why you're pursuing it at this point in your life, why do you need it, and know your plans after graduation very, very well. If you're a businessman, know the details about the conference or the meeting you're going to, and if the conference or the meeting that you're going to is not prominent enough, you can expect 
that you can get a rejection because of that as well. Number five, under any circumstance, and this is true for all the non-immigrant visas out there, do not show that you would like to work in the USA under any circumstance. And as long as you can take care of these five tips, I think you're golden. There's a lot more information on this channel about how to make sure that your visa gets approved. And if you're facing issues, you can reach out to me anytime you want via my Instagram, via my WhatsApp number, which is in the description, or by signing up on ymgrad.com and our team will be happy to reach you and help you with your visa processing. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. If you sign up on ymgrad.com, we'll send you a lot of free information and updates about the visas, approvals, rejections, and consulates that we keep researching on. Thank you so much again and goodbye. Take care until next time. Thank you.